the shores of beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Walking in Victory with Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The powerful and prophetic ministry of Bishop Neil C. Ellis is impacting the lives of believers all around the world. His bold and forthright presentation of spiritual truths and biblical principles is sure to change your life forever. Get ready to experience a fresh approach to ministry as this anointed author and pastor teaches us how to walk in victory. Walking in victory. Well, God bless you today and welcome to Walking in Victory. This is Neil Ellis sitting in for my dear wife Patrice today. And I am so delighted that you have decided to join us today in this edition of Walking in Victory. Now listen, today I'm going to be sharing with you a portion of part one of the sermon series I shared just before we came into the new year uh, when we talked about the will of God, the will of God. I am so desirous of all of you living your lives inside of that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God that Paul talks about. I believe this message is going to help you to do just that. I'm so excited about presenting it to you today. And uh, next week, Patrice will be back to join us in this segment of the program. All right, let's get ready now to look to the Word of God. And I'll join you at the end of the message. No matter where the affairs of your life have landed you today or what it is, no matter what it is you're battling over or struggling with, as you hear this message, God wants you to see yourself as a victorious believer. Nobody wants you to fulfill your destiny more than Almighty God. Nobody. Nobody wants you to see your dreams come to pass any more than the God who created you. He was the one who put the dream in your heart in the first place. So God wants to bring out the best in you. I know it's difficult to, to see that and to feel that and to know that in times like these. But God wants to bring you into God ordained opportunities and God sanctioned moments. I know that's hard to receive. With sickness and death all around you. With challenges facing you and members of your family. With a scaled down work schedule. And with minimal income in these days of an elongated pandemic, I need you to be able to receive it anyway that God wants to bring you into God-ordained opportunities 
and God sanctioned moments. God wants to do some amazing things in your life, ladies and gentlemen, but he wants to do them on his terms and according to his divine will for your life. The number one question on so many people's minds today is simply this. What's the will of God? For my life. They're looking all around them. And many people are not liking what they're seeing. And uh, they're asking, how do I know? What is God's will for my life? With the circumstances of their lives seem to be contradicting the word of God. Many are asking, what am I supposed to be doing with my life in this season of my life? Listen up, everybody. God wants you to be certain and confident that you not only know his will for your life, but you understand how to walk in it every day of your life. That's why when you come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and into a personal relationship with God, the Holy Spirit moves in and dwells on the inside of you. And it is the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you who reveals the will of God for your life to you. Now this is a time, ladies and gentlemen, and in times of crisis, Christian people really have to focus in on minding their own business. Because God hardly ever shows you his will for somebody else's life. You must keep in mind. The same God who created you. Created everybody else. You've got to keep in mind. That the same blood of Jesus. That saves you saved every other believer you got to keep in mind that the same God you call our father you do it for a reason because he's not your father alone and so you've got to understand ladies and gentlemen that the same God who shows you his will for your life is the God who shows every other believer his will for their lives. I'm calling all Christian believers under the sound of my voice to calm down. Mind your own business in this season. And try to focus in on God's will for your life. Don't try to fix everybody else's life. Not in this kind of season that we're in now. Don't try from your position of hurt and pain. To fix everybody else's hurt and pain. You've got to understand and you'll see that through this text today. That sometimes God orchestrates pain. To drive you into purpose. To get you into destiny. And so my brothers and sisters. You've got to understand then. That God wants us to know his will. Even more than we desire to know it. The will of God is exactly what you would choose for your life. If you had sense enough to choose it. 
But see, you can't choose God's will for your life. And yet, if you had the sense enough to choose, you will choose exactly what God's will is for your life. But notice the pronoun, God's will. Consecrate me now, Lord, to thy service by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and then let my will be lost in thine. See, it is God's will. You cannot Give yourself God's will. You must find God's will for your life. And you find God's will for your life through your relationship with him and through the reading and the studying of the word of God. If you are ignorant to the principles and the precepts and the promises of God's word, you will always be ignorant to the will of God for your life because his word is his will. Now, has this Hebrew boy, Samson, he's born at a time when the Philistinian people had seized the Hebrew people. They had seized the Hebrew people and all of their properties. They were under siege by the, the, the Philistinian people and the boy had the nerve, the audacity. When he comes of age to choose a wife, to choose a Philistinian woman, an Israelite. All of his people are under oppression by the Philistinian people. And Samson goes ahead and claims to fall in love with a woman from among the people who have his people oppressed. Misdirected passion. time of the text it was ridiculous for a Hebrew boy to dare to think that he could marry a Philistinian woman so he shared his passion and his desires with his friends but more so in this text with his parents. And he makes it clear to his mother and father that he desires to propose to this woman. Now up to this point in the text, all he knows is she's good looking. But he also does know, pardon me, that she is a Philistine. The woman is good looking. He does not know her name at the time of the text. But he tells his father. I want to marry her and I need you, your help daddy. To set it up for me. And here are the parents, the mother and father. They're challenging him by questioning him as to why he would try to marry someone from the Philistinian group and not a woman from the house of Israel. They drilled him into trying to understand why he had to fall in love with the enemy. Her people have our people oppressed. This is similar to when we were under minority rule. He is. All of his people are oppressed by 
by the Philistinian people. All of his people's property have been confiscated by the Philistinian people. And this boy falls in love. So he says, with a Philistinian woman who he'd really never met. This boy had a complicated life by claiming he had fallen in love with a woman from the group who oppressed his people. His passion has taken such a leap that he wanted to marry this woman from among his oppressors. And not only did he want his parents to feel good about it, but he wanted his daddy to help him set it up. Parents, have you ever had any of your children who put you in the position where you would ask yourself, Whose child is this? This, this can't be my child. <laughs> this young man was insistent. He was radical. And his parents were confused about it. And look what the Bible says. Here we go now in verse number four. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord. His father and mother did not know that this thing that is complicating his life Was of the Lord. Read the rest of the, of the verse please. That he was seeking an occasion. To move against the Philistines. For at that time. The Philistines had dominion. Over Israel. The boy's passion had taken such a leap. That he wanted to marry the woman. He wanted his parents to feel good about it. He wanted his daddy to help him. Set up a date with the girl. He's insistent. He's real, radical, and his parents are confused. But the Bible says this was in the will of God. He falls in love with a woman from the people who were oppressing his people. And the Bible says, Ah, Lord. His parents didn't know that this was in the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I always thought that if something is of God, it will always work. But what concerns me is how can something be in the will of God and fail? Have you ever done something that you thought for sure was the will of God? It passed all your confirmation tests. You knew you heard from God. You knew you saw the signs. You knew you had confirmations. And so on the strength of those convictions, you stepped out. And when you stepped out, all hell broke loose. And you said, but God, I thought this was you. I thought it was you that led me to that job. I thought it was you that pushed me into that direction. I thought for sure, God, this was you who told me to step out and start my own business. I thought for sure 
It was you that brought us together in marriage. But I can't understand God. How can something be in your will and still go so wrong? Let me make it very clear to you. That the will of God is not sent to you to please you. The will of God is not sent to fulfill you. The will of God is not sent to make you comfortable. The will of God is not sent to make you brag on yourself. So, so his father, verse 10, Delton, go ahead, please. So his father went down to the woman, and Samson gave a feast there, for young men used to do so. This is what you do when you go now getting ready to propose to a woman. You give a seven-day feast, and you give her seven days to answer. Why is she taking her seven days to answer? You feeding everybody. This ain't even the wedding yet. So you could feed everybody in a day and at the seven day the woman could come and tell you no. All right. Okay, let's read verse 20, please. And Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. Okay, watch this now. Samson. See, once he proposed now, they call him your wife. You ain't been married yet. But in the culture of the day. Once you propose, a lady said yes, they start calling you husband, wife. Samson never got to marry the woman. And I can fill in the blanks next week. He never got to marry the woman, ladies and gentlemen. His companions fix that. And the man he had set aside for his best man married her. See it right there? Now, what happened here? Yes, the man was disgusting. He was terrible. But that ain't the issue here. The issue here is not the best man's morals or character. The issue here is you got to see it in the text, ladies and gentlemen. God did not mean for the relationship to work. He never intended that relationship to last. He only meant for the relationship to move Samson into the position so that he could use him in another dimension. And to get him to the dimension that he needed to be on, God had to let him go through a failed relationship. All right, read verse 4. Go back up there and read verse 4 for me, please. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord. Here it is, here it is, read please. That he was seeking the Lord, go ahead was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Watch this now. God recognized that Israel, his chosen people, were under oppression. And God set up Samson to fall in love with one of theirs. So he could get into the camp and bring confusion. And that's what I'll work on next week. But you got to understand here that the failed relationship was the catalyst that catapulted Samson into God's divine destiny. God set it up, then God set it off. So that he could strategically get Samson to the place that would lead him to his destiny. And, And what did it? A failed relationship. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, as I bring this to a close, uh, let me make sure we understand something very carefully. To get to the place where you are now in your life, it's not just your friends that helped you. It's the cutthroats. It's the liars. It's the backstabbers. 
is the people who betray you. All of them help you to get to where you are. Because every time somebody backstab you, it hurt you, but it helped you. Every time somebody lied on you, it bothered you, but it bettered you. Every time somebody betrayed you, it drained you, but it developed you. And every time you've been through something, it shifted you for what was ahead of you. This kind of understanding will lead you away from living with regrets. And get you to a place of gratitude where you could be thankful to God for the people who bless you while you're giving him thanks for those who oppressed you. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, as we shared in this message, the will of God, I sure hope it blessed you and helped you. Of course, we are not out of message. We're just out of time. So next week, God willing, we'll back, be back with you at the same time with part two of this sermon series, The Will of God. See you then. Ladies, it's that time we've been waiting for. Neil Ellis Ministries and Mount Tabor Church present Service Just for Women. Women, we've been pressing hard during this pandemic to balance our time, energy, and life. Now is our time for refreshing as we deliberately carve out time together to hear a powerful word from the Lord through Bishop Neil C. Ellis. I was sent here to those that God handpicked. I don't care how you got here, the arrest happened in the spirit. You couldn't miss this if you tried. Because God ordered that you'd be up in here today to get this because he sent me to tell you time has come. You must come out. Call your friends. Make it a girl's night to remember. It's our annual service just for women. January 31st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. See you there. Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church family in Nassau, Bahamas wish to thank you for viewing the Walking in Victory broadcast and invite you to tune in next week to experience this powerful prophetic ministry. Should you wish to correspond with Bishop Ellis, please write him at P.O. Box N9705, Nassau, Bahamas, or email him at info at neilellisministries.com. Walking in Victory